Welcome to the Chop Shop. My name is Dion Tucker. In this video, I'll discuss how to navigate the circle of fourths on the trombone. Being able to play through the circle of fourths is an important skill to have as a trombonist. In this video, I'm gonna share five exercises with you that'll help you play and hear your way through the circle of fourths. Now, before we jump into that, I wanna thank everybody out there who's been supporting the channel. I got some exciting news to announce in the next few weeks. In the meantime, if you wanna show your support, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get a heads up on whenever I put out a new video. I wanna jump right into these exercises, so let me grab my horn and let's get to it. So the first thing you wanna do when practicing the circle of fourths is get familiar with the sound of the root movement going from note to note. You might have noticed me playing it at the beginning of the video. I was starting on a concert B flat, but in this example, I'm gonna start on a concert C. So start on a concert C and just get familiar with what it sounds like to move that fourth interval. The next thing you want to do is you want to start to practice the triads of each chord as you move around the circle of fourths. It should sound something like this. So once we feel comfortable with just playing the triads, we're gonna stick with that shape, but we're gonna add a half step movement going from the third scale degree into the root of the next chord within the circle of fourths. It should sound something like this. Now you may have noticed in that last exercise, there was times that I paused at the top of the arpeggio, then I went down an octave to create that same half step approach. I did that to keep the continuity in the exercise and so we weren't jumping all over the place octave wise. Now in this exercise, I'm gonna use that same half step, except we're gonna use it going down. So we're gonna play one, three, five of the arpeggio then we're gonna move down in half steps to get to the root of the next chord in the circle of fourths. Should sound something like this. So once we feel comfortable with our triads, we want to move on to seventh chords and not major seventh chords, but dominant seventh chords. 
Now, this is really important when we're dealing with the circle of fourths because it brings us to one of the most common sounds in music. And one of the most common progressions is five to one, the dominant five chord leading to the one, which is the root of the next chord. So this is what the circle of fourths sets up. Whatever note we're playing is the five of the next note that we're going to. So having a good handle of being able to play our dominant seventh chords is really important. It should sound something like this. Now in this last exercise, we gotta throw that half step movement in there somewhere. And we're gonna use one of the most common leading tones in music. That's the flatted seventh scale degree leading to the third of the next chord. So in this exercise, we're gonna start on a different chord tone when we're playing the triad. We're gonna start on the major third. So we'll play the third, we'll play the fifth, we'll play the root, then we'll play that flatted seventh and we'll use it as a half step leading into the third of the next chord. Should sound a little something like this. Now it's always helpful once you're really familiar with the triads and different half step movements that I talked about to be able to go through the circle of fourths and improvise using these different techniques, whether it be a half step movement, whether it be using the flatted seven to the third, just figure out different ways that you can weave through the circle of fourths and really start to get familiar, not only on the instrument, but let your ears get familiar with the movement of the sound. Hopefully you'll be able to use these exercises as a foundation for being able to play and hear your way through the circle of fourths. Now really this is just the beginning. There's so many different ways we can go with this. Maybe this is just a part one of this video. Maybe I'll make another part using some different devices. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out and I'll see you next time at the Chop Shop.